I'm Lindsay Mitchell. I'm the Director of Communications and Marketing for Illinois Corn. Um, I want to welcome you today to our big announcement, and we would request that if you are not speaking, you place yourself on mute, uh, just so that we don't interrupt any um, audio or discussion that we might be having. Um, we're going to begin today with a few words from our Illinois Corn Growers Association President, Randy DeSutter, followed by comments from David Wessel, who's Illinois Soybean Association's Utilization Committee Chairman. Then we are going to hear from Laura Gentry, who is um, Illinois Corn's Director of Water Quality Research. And then we'll end with some comments from the Precision Conservation Management Farmer and Illinois Soybean Association Director, Elliot Uphoff. So after hearing from all of our guests, we'll open it up for questions from the media, should there be any. Um, the news conference will be recorded and available tomorrow morning for anybody who would like to review it or if there's anybody who's unavailable to watch it live. So with that, we'll begin. I'll pass it off to Randy DeSutter, Illinois Corn Growers Association President. Hello, everyone. I'm Randy DeSutter. I'm president of Illinois Corn Growers. I'm uh, a farmer near Woodhall, Illinois, and live in northern Knox County. And we're really excited that the, the Soybean Association from Illinois is joining us in this effort on precision conservation management. It's been a very successful program so far, and I think with their cooperation, it's going to be even better. I know I've used conservation on my farm, being no-tilling for almost 30 years. I know that these kind of conservation practices are not only good for the environment, but they're good for farmers financially, too. And we look forward to uh, expanding our efforts throughout the state. It's a long state all the way from down there by Cairo up to Rockford. So there's a lot of different types of soils and different kinds of, of farming. So we're looking forward to expanding it so farmers all across the state can uh, study these practices and uh, we have more conservation involved and uh, just a lot of good things are, are gonna come of, of this partnership. And we wanna once again, thank the Soybean Association for joining us in this very good program. Thank you. Thanks, Randy. Um, now I will introduce David Wessel, who is the Illinois Soybean Association Utilization Committee Chairman from Chandlerville, Illinois. David? Thanks, Lindsay and Randy, for letting us join in on this uh, amazing project, that, the PCM project that you have. It'll be a great collaboration between the Illinois Corn and Soybean Checkoff Programs, bringing tried and proven regenerative ag practices that farmers are using on their farm to the forefront. Through this investment, the economic and environmental benefits of these practices will allow the sharing of knowledge needed for a sustainable future for all. Expanding the PCM project to new regions of Illinois will give farmers the tools they need to make viable decisions and to be the solution in addressing changing weather patterns and water quality wherever they farm in our state and partnering with Illinois Corn will allow us to provide viable resources for all farmers in Illinois that will help inform them of the latest development pertaining to increased productivity, profitability, and best management practices, ensuring a bright future for Illinois agriculture. And we look forward to this upcoming project. Thank you, David. Um, Next, I'd like to introduce Laura Gentry. She is Illinois Corn's Director of Water Quality Research. Laura is the one who is um, working with the data, analyzing, aggregating, anonymizing the data that we're collecting. So Laura, can you give us some perspectives on this new partnership as it relates to the data? Sure, sure. Thank you, Lindsay. And um, this program is, is very much a data-driven Program. We live in a data-driven world, and uh, farmers today uh, really rely on good, reliable, and objective data to be able to make the best decisions on their farms. And yes, we do want to see farmers adopting more conservation practices across their acres, but we don't want any farmer to become so green that they put themselves out of business. We want farmers to make good financial decisions along with their good conservation decisions. So that is what we really strive for at the Illinois Corn Growers. Um, when we started the program in 2015, it began as a way for 
uh, addressing problems that farmers had told us for years that they had. And that was really um, reconciling their business decisions with their conservation decisions. And this comes, of course, at a time when the farm economy is not the best. In fact, a lot of farmers are, are struggling to even make a profit. And so we have to make good business decisions first and foremost, or we won't be able to make good business uh, or good conservation decisions. So that's really an important part of this whole program. And the way that we do this is we allow farmers to make good, meaningful comparisons with what they're doing on their own farm versus what other farmers are doing in their region, in their state, even uh, we can drill down to within their county or within their watershed, all in a way that's very um, sensitive to farmer information. So it takes their information and it aggregates, it anonymizes it. And the five years we've been operating this program, allowing farmers to make these kinds of comparisons, we've never had one farmer come back and say, you know, um, uh, I don't like the way that you, you made my information available to other people. It's because we're very careful about how that information gets relayed. At PCM, the first thing we do in all of our data management decisions is we say, is this in the best interest of our PCM farmers? And so that's what we allow our farmers uh, to be able to look at their report. Every farmer every year in PCM gets their own farm report just for their farm, but it also lets them look at how they're doing field by field relative to how farmers, uh, other farmers in the program are doing. And so those kinds of meaningful comparisons really help a farmer make a decision about what might happen if I draw back on one tillage pass? What might happen if I reassess my nitrogen application program? Um, should I consider cover crops? These are what we call our practice standards in PCM. It's really tillage, nutrient management and cover crops. And we think that these are the most important practices from a, a conservation perspective to get right because they're the most effective at addressing water quality issues, which is a big deal across the state. But also it's very important for building soil health and providing this, this resiliency to a lot of the, the climate issues we're seeing with more intense rainfall events and drought events across the country. And it also sets up our farmers to be able to start taking advantage of some of these carbon markets and other ecosystem markets that are, that are coming down the pipe in the future years for farmers. So we want farmers to be able to take advantage of that as well. So we feel like this is really helping our, our partnership with Illinois soybean just become stronger. This is uh, you know, opening up and sort of realigning the corn and soybean landscape in PCM and we couldn't be any happier about this partnership. Thank you, Laura, for those comments. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Elliot Uphoff, who is a farmer in the Precision Conservation Management Program and also an Illinois Soybean Association Director. Um, Elliot is from Shelbyville, Illinois. Elliot? Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, I just joined the PCM. Uh, this was before I knew that Illinois and uh, corn, oh, Illinois soybean and corn were going to come together for uh, this project. Um, but what I quickly figured out is this PCM program is very in depth. Uh, when the field um, the field person sat down with me, he was looking at every bit of the operation. He wanted to get an idea on what I'm doing in the past and future plans and um, yields. And I I gladly give those yields because that's going to help. Um, make this information more usable and I'm really looking forward to the data I'm going to get from this program and as Laura said there's a, a big carbon market and um, making sure that farmers get involved with that and take advantage of the financial aspect of PCM brings to the table um, making sure that we know how to utilize that and when soybeans and corn join together, we're going to have a lot more field people to help our farmers and be out there and see people and uh, hopefully make all of our operations a little more efficient and sustainable. Um, I, I'm, I'm always trying to cut out steps. And if I can look into this data and see, hey, if I cut out this tillage pass, I'm not losing any money. Maybe, in fact, I'm gaining money. 
And that's that's the kind of information I'm looking for. And I think PCM is going to bring to the table is that usable information that's going to help change my operation for the better. Thanks, Elliot. Uh, at this time, um, this is Rachel Peabody. I'm your director of communications at the Illinois Soybean Association. And we've had some great uh, panelists here this morning, speakers, some great points made about the PCM collaboration. And now we'd love to hear your questions. Um, so feel free to go ahead. Um, you can either speak up, uh, ask your question, or we'll also be monitoring the chat box. All right, this is Regina Grace of Brownfield Avenue. Thank you guys all for being on here this afternoon. Um, I was just wondering if uh, for radio purposes, Eric, maybe Lindsay or Rachel, whoever you want to designate this to, could just uh, briefly summarize, you know, the expansion and update to PCM and, and what exactly this partnership is between Illinois Corn and Illinois. Rhiannon, and you were cutting out quite a bit for me. I don't know if anyone else caught the details of that question. Um, if you're in a good spot, could you maybe put a few notes in the chat box that we could uh, make sure we get that answered for you? I think I heard a little bit of it, and I think she asked what the um, could collaboration is between Illinois corn and soybeans. Um, and maybe David wants to speak on this. Um, but I, we're, we're coming together. Soybean is throwing some funds at corn to help make this a bigger and better program. Because one of the problems that when I first signed up was there weren't enough field staff to meet with all the farmers in a timely manner. So it was kind of spread out and we're gonna be able to bring more farmers, more field staff, get more information. The more information, the better this system is gonna be. Um, when you have small sample sizes, it's hard to say, oh yeah, that, that'd work for my operation, you know, if the closest farmer's three counties away. Um, so having more funds, more field staff, we're gonna have, be able to go collect more information. And maybe ran and you had more to that question, but that's what I heard from it. So hopefully that helps. And Rihanna, just to chime in there too, you know, from an association perspective, you know, ISA and Illinois Corn, we have a lot of shared values um, and our farmers are their farmers. And the PCM program is one that we recognized a lot of value in that corn was already doing. And ISA wanted to be able to contribute to that success so we could address just what Elliot said. How can we help, you know, expand the opportunity that it exists here. We also believe in these programs and our farmers are your farmers. So let's work together. And um, really, it's kind of been a starting point, I would say, um, for a lot of great collaboration that's happening between our two organizations, not just even PCM related, um, but it's, it's kind of served as a catalyst to get our two groups working together um, and stronger and even better. We're looking forward to that. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right, mm -hmm. Rachel. This is a great stepping stone for the collaboration of, of all of agriculture. Um, I mean, anytime we can work together and be one voice for the farmers, uh, it's a win-win. Um, the PCM pro project is real-time field data. That's what I personally like about this project. Um, like. Um, Randy said at the beginning, he's a lifetime no-tiller, as, as am I, and I've already been doing many of these uh, field operations uh, throughout the years, but I haven't been putting the data behind it to find out if what's economical and what's not, and that's where the bottom line is, and this PCM project will, will bring that to fruition. Well, I think maybe we could have Laura add on how much we'll be able to expand the program. It seems like we're in around 15 or 16 counties right now. You know, Illinois has got over 100, maybe 102 counties in the state. How, how much are we going to be able to, to expand since you're the one that's in charge of the program? 
Oh, well, it's really, it's really Travis Deppy now who's doing that part of the program. I, I'm doing the data crunching these days, Randy, and I'm happy with that role. But uh, we talk really closely. In fact, we had a call this morning with, uh, with Amy Brody at Illinois Soybean Association, Travis and I. And um, we also work really closely with the Soil and Water Conservation District. So uh, we, we talk closely with the Association of Illinois Soil and Water Conservation Districts and the SWCDs themselves. We are in 16 counties right now, like Randy said, and it looks like this is gonna let us move. We're basically doubling the program. We're looking at moving into 15 new counties. We're moving west and south and north. As a result of this program, we're still working with soybeans on exactly which counties that will be. We'll work through the soil with the soil and water districts, work within our CS offices too. But um, this, this program basically means a doubling of what we're gonna be able to achieve. And um, like Elliot was saying, it just lets us also use the data to more impact. And um, more data just means better decisions for all of us across Illinois and, and we think across the Midwest. Laura, there's a question in the chat box for you. Are there any plans to release yearly reports on any of the field projects? Um, we have a, a yearly report that we do release, an aggregated report. So um, I think that's that's probably what they're what uh, they're referring to. Eric, uh, correct us if you meant something more specific. But we do release a yearly report. Um, it comes out in June. It's really a high level summary of what we're doing. And then also we um, disseminate a lot of PCM data, especially the more financially based parts of our conservation or you know, conservation practice work on farm docs. And if you, um, you know, the University of Illinois extension platform, farm docs daily. And if you go to their website and you do a search on precision conservation management, you'll see the, the six or seven different articles that have come up on all different things from tillage to nutrient management to um, other aspects of, of crops and rotations um, from that. And we're any, trying to do a little bit more with our reporting too. Any additional questions from the phone? Laura, I wondered if you could also mention the number of farmers and acres, you know, where, where, where currently are that I think that would be useful. Sure. Yeah, we have about 330 farmers in Illinois right now. Uh, and then that's in the 16 counties that we're in right now. So uh, we're also in Kentucky, we have 10 counties where we work in Kentucky and we have around 50 farmers that we're working with there and looking to grow uh, our numbers in Kentucky. And uh, we're continuing to expand here in Illinois, just within the 16 counties that we have. We have room to grow within those 16 counties, which is really mostly located in central Illinois. So if you're interested, uh, you can check out our website, precisionconservation.org. And then of course, like we said, we'll be moving uh, across the state, not to every county in the state, but um, we'll have regions where we're operating. And so if you're really interested in working in the program, go to our website and get in touch with me or Travis Deppie um, or contact uh, Amy Rohde at Illinois Soybean Association too. And um, we'll see if uh, maybe we can work in your area. Any additional questions? We'll do a last call for questions. If not, I uh, just wanted to first, you know, thank everyone who joined us today. Um, we were really excited that we were still able to do, you know, kind of a virtual opportunity for you to hear from both sides of the organizations to, or both sides of both ISA and CORN today. Super excited about this partnership and there's going to be a ton of great communications coming out from it. Um, so definitely stay tuned, watch what Illinois CORN and Illinois Soybean Association is putting out about this. Um, this certainly won't be the last time you hear about this program and how we're moving it forward with Illinois farmers. Um, if you need any additional information today, if you'd like to do one-off um, interviews with any of the people that you heard from today, or if you just need additional resources, feel free to contact Lindsay Mitchell at Corn or myself and Claire Weinserl at um, Illinois Soy, and we'd be more than happy to help make those connections and get you the information that you need. 
We are also recording uh, this press conference today. We are going to uh, put it up on the website as of tomorrow, and we will both both organizations will communicate out that link. Um, so we'll make sure that you have um, a copy of this recording as well, should you need it. Lindsay, any final comments from you? Nope, we're just super glad and excited to see so many folks joined us today. So it's nice to connect with people when it's hard to connect with people. Thanks for being here. Yep. Have a great day.